So good afternoon, Highline College students. Happy Tuesday at 1.05 p.m. Yesterday and earlier in the weekend, we had beautiful sun. Now we are back to our typical Seattle weather. So it definitely feels like home. Uh, thank you so much for uh, coming on and participating today in our uh, new uh, virtual forum uh, for the month of May as time seems to fly by. Um, today we have uh, a few special guests and I will have them introduce themselves shortly, but uh, what we're going to do this afternoon is um, have uh, folks representing our campus uh, be able to provide some information that we, we hope you will find useful um, as you complete uh, the quarter. Um, I'll provide some information and then we're really going to open it up for questions. Um, uh, question and comments. You all submitted, many of you submitted questions prior to this, which I will definitely make sure to read and to uh, provide feedback or information. Um, and obviously questions will come up during um, our time today and looking forward to be able to um, speak to those questions or concerns you might have. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Nicole Wilson uh, from our Counseling Center, um, another wonderful colleague at the college. Um, I don't do justice describing the tremendous amount of services that um, our folks here at the institution provide, um, so I'm not even going to try at this point. But um, after hearing um, uh, Nicole talk about the services and counseling, you'll understand why I wanted to have her and um, Soon to be, soon you'll hear from Fuzi Bilal to speak about um, the Highland experience and what we can do to serve our student community. So with that, I will turn it over to Nicole. Hi. So Nicole Hoyes Wilson, and I'm one of the counselors in the Counseling Center. There are five of us. And we just want you to know there's a lot going on right now. Um, you're in week six, seven of the quarter. We're in the middle of a pandemic. But please know you're not alone and we're here to help. There's a lot of things that we can do to help as well. We offer free, and I say free because it's part of your tuition, confidential counseling with licensed mental health counselors, and there's five of us. And there's different counseling that we provide from personal, talking about issues of depression or anxiety, just feeling overwhelmed, educational counseling, thinking of time management and study skills, and then also career counseling, when maybe feeling stuck around which career to choose. What I like about counseling is that you can talk with someone who is in not your family member or your friend, but you can partner with to discover ways in which to cope, to find healing, and then someone else to kind of help you to reach your goals. Like many, we're offering virtual counseling sessions during spring quarter. We're doing those through Zoom, but I know a lot of you are Zoomed out, and so we can also do phone sessions as well. We also have drop-in sessions every day, right? So we can typically get you in to see someone that day or at least within the next two or three. Um, and then we also have a lot of referrals to community resources. So the first faces or the first voices that you might hear are from Vince and Aisha and they're our program coordinators um, and program assistant and they can get you an appointment to see, to see us. They're great. So here we are, those are the five counselors, Sister Lynn, Gloria, Josh, myself, and Tom. And there are easy ways to make an appointment. You can call us um, at the number below, and it goes right to Aisha and to Vince. You can email us at counseling at highline.edu. You can also visit us on our website, counseling.highline.edu. And I encourage you to look at our website because we've got a lot of other resources. Um, community resources listed, but just other tips on kind of how to survive this stress around COVID. You can also visit us. We have Zoom lobby hours where you'll be able to see uh, Vince and Aisha Monday through Thursday. And again, all of this is on our website. But I wanted to take a little time just to talk about the impact of COVID-19 on our mental health. So we're in this historic time. I mean, unless you're over 100 years old, we're all experiencing this unknown together. 
So this is kind of a list of things just as context of what we're experiencing. So we have this collective stress and anxiety, that unknown, we're not sure when we're gonna open, that kind of thing. We're also experiencing grief. And so for, for many of us, that's losing family and friends um, to, the, to COVID, but it's also losing jobs, losing our routine that we had just two months ago. With that is this escalation of fear and bigotry. With that is also a rise in hate crimes, particularly to our Asian American communities. And then we also know that this experience <coughs> isn't equitable and it's not the same for all of us. And disproportionately, this disease is impacting our communities of color, particularly our black communities, our Latinx communities, and our indigenous communities, as well as the elderly. With that, more good news, not, not great news, but we're all, not all able to shelter at home safely. Um, for some of us, home isn't safe. Um, for many of us, we are essential workers. So we're you know, working in the grocery, we're working in healthcare, we're drivers, et cetera. And then all of us are juggling all these multiple responsibilities in new ways. We're parenting different, we are educating different, we are in school, we're working all of these things all kind of at the same time. So with that, it's probably gonna impact us. So we have this collective um, stress response. So that cortisol in our, that hormone in our system, that's that, that fight or flight, it's going often and it raises this kind of physical and emotional responses in us. So what we might see in ourselves and others is this agitation or irritability, maybe changes in sleep or eating. I know I want comfort food and I don't wanna wake up in the morning. That might show up as forgetfulness, difficulty concentrating, it might be hard to, to focus on an exam or a test, things that may have been easier before, it's like brain fog. And then if you have a, a a chronic health issue or a mental health issue, you may also have some increased symptoms of that. And then we're also seeing some increased use of alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs as a way to cope. So our goal, what we wanna do is to lower those stress responses as much as we can. And we've got a couple tips on how to do that. So, and all, again, all of this is on our website, but if we can moderate our news and our social media intake, Every time we see that, that news or something on our phone, it's that little short sh or shot of cortisol. We wanna lower that. So take maybe five minutes a day to look at your news, okay? And then put it away. If we can keep some structure by keeping our regular routine, that helps with forgetfulness, that helps with kind of stabilizing our mood. <sighs> Deep breaths. Take a moment to breathe some other methods of meditation. There's some great apps that are free right now. A lot of us are feeling isolated. So stay connected as much as you can. Call folks, friends, family, write them. Engage in some creative activities. I think my garden has never looked better um, because that's my stress relief. And then this one's really hard. So focus on what is in your control and try not to focus too much on what is out of your control because what's out of my control gives me anxiety. But I can control what I choose to watch, what I, how I choose to spend my time for the most part, what foods that I eat for the most part. So if I focus on that, I feel a little better. And then with this collective anxiety, we need collective care. So what that means is that we need to have grace with ourselves and with others. We're all just doing the best we can. If you can get outside, move your body, um, also reach out for help, offer help when you can, and then we're here. Um, talk to a counselor for extra support. You deserve that hour just for you. Um, we all do. And then again, follow us on our website, Highline or counseling.highline.edu. We're also on Facebook and Instagram. We're here for you um, and look forward to working with you. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Nicole. We appreciate that. Um, looking at that information, and we'll, as a reminder to folks on the participating, um, that uh, this is taped, so we will be able to um, 
put this on the website so we can refer students to it. Um, and actually the campus, because the information, Nicole, you provided is a good reminder for all of us um, to, um, to, you know, in addition to taking care of others that I think many of us do, that we have to remind them to take care of ourselves. Um, so I look forward to um, reviewing that information and trying to practice that myself and model that. So uh, thank you. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Fuzi Bilal from our, I always forget your title, but I always say from Outreach Services and um, Extraordinaire on Campus. So I will turn it over to you and now it's your floor. You have the floor. Hello, Highland family. It's, uh, um, I miss campus. I really miss everybody. I miss campus. It's nice to be here uh, and seeing everybody uh, or some of, some of the colleagues. Um, um, it's, uh, I work for Outreach Services. I'm the Assistant Director of uh, Outreach Services and Community Engagement. And uh, um, so a lot of our work has been uh, um, remote and via Zoom. So uh, uh, I promised myself that I would never go through a Zoom meeting without turning on my camera because I need that personal touch and to see people. Uh, it, it fuels me, it gives me energy. Uh, and uh, um, I wanted to share with you today um, some resources that we have for you on campus. And um, uh, so uh, we just want you to know that we, we have a lot of things going on. The campus, you know, the, uh, we are uh, going through some rough time, but the campus is still functioning. We have, a, we have, um, we're here for you. Um, uh, we, we thrive by helping students and we want to be here uh, to help you. So uh, we have uh, um, uh, our, we have our Zoom lobbies. That's the main kind of hub for, uh, for connecting with information. Um, so uh, I know um, uh, we've been receiving a lot, of, uh, a lot of emails on the Ask at Highline emails uh, and we're able to help. So if you don't know about that, that resource, please uh, connect with us. We'll be, ha we'll be happy to help you and direct you uh, um, and uh, kind of funnel you towards areas where you can uh, get answers and, uh, and, um, and, um, and it's okay to have questions. If you don't have questions now, um, uh, we, so please feel free to ask questions, reach out and connect with us through the uh, ask at highline.edu uh, email. Um, we have, uh, our students might be getting a random phone call um, and it's called, we call it a care um, call campaign. And we just wanna know how you're doing. Um, and I, I'll, we, I made a phone call a few days ago and uh, this really nice lady answered the phone. And I said, hello, this is Fuzi Bilal. I'm calling on behalf of Highline. And I can sense a little stress um, at first because um, sometimes you just get calls from, you know, from people that want to collect money or tell you that there's something is, something is wrong. We just want you to know that we're here to call just to check in on you and see how you're doing. Um, so uh, interestingly enough, um, you know, so, some of us, we are, um, we, we connect with people um, by seeing people daily or through our jobs or, or families and, and, uh, and we're not able to do that right now. So she said something that really hit home for me. Uh, she mentioned that I'm the first person she's talked to in, a, in a, about a week. And it, you know, and it, it's, it's um, so I encourage you to connect with each other, reach out to, to people. So when you get a call from Highline, Please uh, ask questions. Uh, just know that we're we're calling just to check in on you, um, and our goal is to reach out to all of our students. Um, so uh, you will get a call at some point. Uh, but uh, so um, and when that initiative came out, uh, we reached out to our campus, and um, and it's an overwhelming amount of people that wanted to reach out to you uh, and reach out and connect with you because they they do miss you and and. Uh, uh, your peers as well. We're going to have some students calling that uh, that are some student ambassadors, um, and so feel free to uh, talk to them. Ask, you know, what uh, um, if they can help you in any way. Okay, we told them not to call before 10 a.m. So, <laughs> and no later than 7 p.m. So we hopefully we won't be bothering you. But uh, uh, yeah, we just want you to know that we're here. And we're happy to help um, in anything that you need. Um, if you have any questions, again, reach out to us through uh, care at highline.edu. Uh, we, we uh, or I'm sorry, at um, ask at highline. 
email and uh, we'll be happy to direct you from there. Thank you. Thank you, Fuzi. We have a quiet, we have a quiet group today uh, with our attendees, which means, uh, it means they're listening and writing down all these notes and um, going to make sure that they're going to, they're listening and do what they need to do. Um, but we appreciate um, you all both sharing a lot of different resources. Oh, we got a question. We got a question. Uh, what is the link about the, the, the care call once again? Yeah, I'm happy to answer that. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, the, the care calls are just, um, they're just phone calls that our staff and faculty are reaching out to students um, uh, that are enrolled and we, we just want to see how you're doing. Um, and uh, quite frankly, I'm, we're pretty amazed on how resilient our students are. are. So uh, most of you, most of our students are doing fine and they, you know, so that's, uh, that's what the uh, care calls are. So we don't have a link for it. We're just calling students. Um, randomly between the hours of 10 and 7 just to see how you're doing. And if I could add on what was said, I think what we're what we're finding and I think as we talk to uh, other teachers and instructors, other staff, counselors, other presidents, and other students um, is that throughout our country um, a lot of our students are struggling, right? They're struggling for a variety things and reasons. And I think it's, it's our responsibility here at Highline, but I think as educators to be able to, re to reach out to our students and ask what, um, you know, check in, first of all, we don't want to assume that we don't want to assume the worst, but we want to check in and see how people are doing. And if things are going well, we want to recognize and celebrate that, because that's wonderful. But if things aren't going the way you want it to go or you feel like it should be going um, and how we can help you and how we can listen to you. Um, that makes us better educators. That makes us better at what we do um, because you students deserve that, all of you. And, um, you know, we will continue to identify ways to continue to connect um, and to listen and to support and to celebrate you. Um, all at the same time. Um, so we look, we look forward again to, to doing that. Um, I want to take a moment and um, talk about some questions that were already submitted. And um, at any time, if you all have any questions that come to mind, feel free to utilize the Q&A chat. Um, as uh, many of you know, and if you haven't checked your email today, yesterday an, an email was sent out regarding the CARES Act. That was been the, the federal funding that has been provided to colleges across the country um, to assist students. Um, our application is live um, as of yesterday, and I, it, the time of when applications have been live has varied campus to campus. We have been very intentional in terms of being able to create a process that allows us to be able to respond to every student in a timely manner and do our research to be able to assist students. Um, so that after careful, careful, careful consideration and organization, and there is a host of people to thank, um, information was live yesterday. Uh, and to no surprise, we received uh, quite a bit of um, uh, folks applying. As of today, I don't have the specific number handy, but as of today, we had over 600 submissions uh, sent in, which speaks to the needs of our students. Um, and this is similar to many institutions in our system, in our state. Um, in terms of uh, students needing, uh, students wanting assistance and needing assistance. So the, our team will do our best uh, to be able to respond. Um, we, have, we have provided some information on there about the process. Um, there is a well, uh, email address that you can provide if you have questions. Um, 
and clarification, but we have folks ready to be able to, to answer questions and to serve. Uh, so if you haven't checked your email, uh, that did come out yesterday, so I'd encourage you to check your email um, and review it. And um, if you uh, would like to apply for funding, then please go ahead and apply. And we will take it from there. Students have also asked about graduation um, garb. Now, I know regarding commencement activities, there was, I sent out an email um, probably a little over a week ago talking about our plans for commencement, that we will do a virtual commencement uh, next month, honoring um, our students, but also a reception later in the fall. And that is, um, of course, that, that determining around um, when we're able to be back on campus and the directives we get from Governor Inslee. But we do look forward to be able to celebrate in person later on this fall, if possible. But for now, we want to celebrate virtually through commencement. And again, that was based on um, the 600 plus votes that you all provided in the survey. So our students' voice really mattered and um, created the opportunity to be able to celebrate you. And in addition to that, there is other, um, we asked them a question on that survey for, for you all to provide information of how we can celebrate you. And there was a number of suggestions and we're trying to incorporate um, one to the best of our ability to really be able to celebrate you in the upcoming months. In terms of a cap and gown, uh, uh, we encourage you to to check back on the commencement page, commencement um, uh, page to get information. We're gonna be updating that as we go and their work commencement committee is working on that now. So there will be information that will come out regarding purchasing uh, graduation gear, uh, graduation swag. So I just ask you to keep on the lookout for that. And you can always check back um, with campus asking at ask at highline.edu. One question that has really uh, been coming up from a lot of our students is really, um, <coughs> excuse me, concern about grading. And um, I wanna turn that over to um, Dr. Lardner, our Interim Vice President of Academic Affairs. And the question um, has been, um, you know, some of the K through 12 schools are doing a pass fail. Um, some colleges throughout the country have done that. Um, the question has been, will Highland College adopt a universal policy? And will this, and some folks have asked, will our entire system in Washington adopt a universal policy in terms of grading? Um, and part of that is some of our students have expressed deep stress on concern about trying to meet the needs of the classes. Um, and in instructors. Um, and then also some other ones have felt that because of the many challenges our students are facing outside of the classroom, um, this would be an opportunity to assist and they feel support them. So I want to turn that over to Dr. Lardner, if she can provide a perspective coming from the academic affairs side. Sure. Thanks, Dr. Mosby. Um, the First, in terms of individual, if you as a student are feeling stressed or worried about your grades or about the way your class is going, um, you've got a couple of options. One is that there, I'm looking at our catalog, this is also online, there's a very clear and meant to be supportive process for students to connect with somebody about concerns for your class. So. If I was in Nicole Wilson's class and I had a concern, at first I'd try to talk to her. And if I couldn't talk to her, or didn't want to for some reason, then I would talk to what is called the department coordinator, the faculty member who works with Nicole. And then if that didn't solve the problem, then I would talk to the division chair. And all along the information gets shared so that the student has to be active in the process, but all of us who are listening to students are working hard to try to sort out what's going on, and we're always trying to solve the problem as best we can. Because we're in these extraordinary times that are new for students and new for faculty, it could be 
that something just happened in my faculty member's life and maybe they didn't answer email for a couple of days. But if you ask about it, we can find out about it and we can support the teacher and we can support you. So it's really important to know that that student, um, it's called the complaint process. And even if you just have a question, it's not just for you're finished with the course and you're worried about your grade, it can be, I'm just not feeling connected and I'm not sure what to do. That's the process to use to raise that concern. Um, as Nicole also said at the beginning, reaching out to counselors, reaching out to advisors, um, people who will be advocates for you, that's also an important step to consider taking. Um, but when this started, Erin Reeder, the VP for Student Services, and I talked about whether we could make a quick shift to just do credit, non-credit for all of our students because of the reasons that students are voicing. And we decided not to because there was no way to do that without having unintended negative consequences for some of our students. Some students are using funding sources that require grades. So if we shift to credit, non-credit, we would mess up some students' funding. Some students are planning to transfer to schools that have different policies than the University of Washington, for example. So not having your last quarter GPA might hurt you when you went to transfer. And because we couldn't, and our whole system, we're part of a system, and the, system, the presidents didn't all agree to go credit, non-credit, so we don't want to be the one school in the system that isn't that is doing that because we just worry that there are unintended negative consequences for students what Aaron and i did talk about though was um, uh, student services will reach out to students who are in if, if faculty will notify student services of students who are at risk of failing Student services staff will reach out to those students to be sure everyone understands how to withdraw from a class. Also, if you finish your class and you have a grade and you just think, oh, this, all this stuff happened to me, um, there is an option to petition to have your grade change to credit, no credit. We're past the formal deadline when you can request your grade to be credit, no credit. But there is an after the after grades have been turned in opportunity to petition and everybody in student services and in academic affairs knows that this is an extraordinarily challenging time for students. So we're going to do everything we can to make sure everybody gets the best outcome possible. Thank you, Emily. Um, there's a question that came in, which <clears throat> I'd like for you to, uh, if you can speak to that, and I think would be a good segue into some questions around coming back to campus. Um, and I, I'm more than happy to read the question to you. Um, I think the summer is going to look very difficult um, for students attending college. How is this going to impact students taking classes in the summer? And what should we do if a student has a science lab that depends on hands-on learning? It's a really good question. And um, when Nicole was talking about um, grief earlier, one piece of that grief is that um, we know lots of people benefit from hands-on, in-person, relational learning, and the fact that that's, we don't have any control of when we get to use that kind of learning again is a source of um, grief and stress. So we don't know yet who will be allowed to be on campus, whether science labs will be allowed to be on campus this summer. And for students who've been working really hard to finish a degree that involves lab science classes and you've got it all lined up and people have helped you get that in line and you know your deadlines, we don't know that we can give you the opportunity to do your science lab hands-on. Our science faculty have worked really hard to create virtual equivalents for hands-on learning. Um, 
so we'll do our best our ca uh, we can if we're not allowed to do science labs this summer we'll do the best we can to have these virtual science labs but it is not the same to be doing your lab at home as it is to be in a lab with your teacher with your peers being able to talk informally being able to just look over and watch how somebody else is putting some set of tools together it's never it's just Virtual learning is amazing, but what we can learn as human beings by being in the company of each other is huge. So it is difficult. Um, we're, we're the, your science faculty are doing the best they can to create good experiences for students. And, um, and, and, and I'm sorry that we just, uh, that, that we're not in charge of when we get to go back to hands-on learning. That's a really hard question. Thank you, Emily. Um, you know, I want to really echo um, what I think many of us are feeling. It is extremely difficult to not be on campus. I mean, I, I will tell you, uh, not having to wear, to be all dress up and to wear a suit every day, I'll tell you, I do like that. I'm in a, just to let you know, your president's in some slippers, some old faded blue shorts, and a hoodie that I've had for 15 years. So uh, I, am, I am not looking my Denzel best, um, but I'm comfortable, but I would rather be on campus with, with all of you. And we, um, I know that there's a lot of questions about when we can come back and, and about summer and what does that look like? And really we have to, no matter the feelings of people, we have to be, we have to adhere to Governor Inslee. And our governor has given the directive uh, that until June 1st, uh, very few people, very selected people are gonna be on campus. Um, our, our instruction um, will continue. Um, we call it emergency remote um, um, instruction and service delivery. Um, that will continue in this format for the remainder of the quarter and for summer um, that is consistent with other colleges within our system. Um, our fall is going to have some options, some different options, and that has been communicated to all students um, about three, two and a half, three weeks ago. Um, some of that is dependent though on obviously what uh, our governor says, uh, but this is right now our reality. This isn't going to be forever, but this is our reality and it all circles back to safety. Um, uh, college campuses, high school campuses are playgrounds for spreading COVID. And much like getting a cold, what we do on campus when you get a cold, everybody gets a cold. Um, and not to dismiss a cold, um, but we've, but it's taken up a notch now with COVID. And um, we are trying to be responsible and trying to prevent spreading of that. Um, and our, our school has 8, 000, 8, between eight and 10,000 students each quarter. Um, and that's just students, that's not including our staff and faculty. So there's a lot of people that we have to, um, you know, we have, we care for. Um, we wanna come back um, and we will come back when we're told we can come back. But until then, our instruction can't stop and our services can't stop. And although it might, look different and might be a little clunky at times too because we're entering a very new uh, way of doing things and especially things that we're told that we had to basically do overnight. Um, we are still, our, our, our priority is to still serve our entire community and that includes our students, service, our staff and faculty at the level that they deserve and at that um, it is excellent as we can be. But um, until then, we need to adhere to what's what the directive is coming from the state. And the question, there was a question said how, how it impacts everybody not on campus. I don't necessarily understand that, that question. So if you're able to maybe uh, speak to it a little bit more, I'm happy to uh, provide some information. Uh, a response. In the meantime, while hopefully whoever wrote that can can expand a little bit, uh, there's a question I'd like for uh, 
Fuzi to be able to be able to provide some information. We had a couple of students that asked about how do they get set up for placement for the placement testing and placement office. Do you mind speaking about that process? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, for all of our uh, services, uh, such as placement, uh, you can get on a Zoom call uh, on, a, on our Zoom lobbies and connect with, uh, uh, with a team member and they can help you through the process. So, uh, uh, and I know um, Shannon and her crew are working uh, pretty hard um, in uh, assisting students. So uh, that would be the best bet. Uh, also, if you, um, um, I know sometimes they get a little backed up. So if you need immediate assistance, you can uh, email me and I'll be ha happy to connect you directly with them as well. So, and I'll put up the link for our Zoom lobbies for our uh, placement and testing questions. Um, thank you. A uh, question came through, will Highline events be on Zoom or campus? Um, until we are uh, been given directions to come back on campus, all events will be virtual. Um, however, I do want to mention that when we are given the okay to be back on campus, it's important for folks to understand that we will be practicing uh, social, adhering to social distancing protocols back on campus. Um, but I also just want to let people know that um, how we come back on campus will be different. How we um, have events, how we um, are present on campus, how our, how our classes are physically structured, uh, things are going to be uh, different. Um, not saying that nothing will happen, things won't happen, but things are going to be different. So when we are able to come back on campus, we will have some restrictions. Um, our business is as usual on a format is not the case anymore. So just wanted to provide that information to people. Uh, there was uh, a couple of questions and one was um, asking if students are failing classes due to lack of understanding. And I think again, going back to what Dr. Lardner um, was talking about, um, there is a process for help. I, I, I do think that I would say first and foremost, you always wanna have a conversation start with your instructor. You wanna do that first and foremost. Um, and, you know, there are some times where our, our, that communication has, has not happened and um, our faculty don't necessarily know if, if you know, a student, a student is struggling or why they're struggling. And I would encourage students to approach their instructor to have that conversation. If you've had that conversation, then again, uh, talking, you know, I refer to you to what Dr. Lardner was talking about, about the different processes that are there. I'd encourage you to review the information in our catalog because it does state uh, the process. You can always contact Academic Affairs and uh, Emily, do you mind putting in the chat box um, uh, the web link or the contact uh, information for Academic Affairs? You could probably go to Carrie um, and Carrie can provide um, some specific information of how to assist students. Thank you. One other question uh, was um, around transcripts. Um, and uh, has the transcripts have not, um, uh, there's a transcript issue about not hearing back from uh, admissions. Um, and about the process, is the process delayed longer than what was quoted in February? Um, I would go ahead and um, I'd go ahead and contact uh, the admissions office um, to to find out about the transcripts. If that has already happened, I'd be more than happy. I would recommend um, feel free to email our vice president for student services, Aaron Reeder and then he could follow up um, with the admissions department. But I would encourage you to start with the admissions department first. What will happen with required classes and exams and what might happen in the fall and winter? How will colleges re react to requests for a deferrals gap year? Um, 
I can I can definitely speak to the first few questions. I think the last question, um, I, I think that's more of a question for many of the four years, even though we have bachelor programs here as well. Um, classes and exams, as we said before, and in, in all the information, and again, I would encourage you, encourage everybody to continue reading our COVID page and also uh, checking your email for information that comes from the campus, either from my email address or from others regarding services. Um, classes and exams, we are not stopping services. We're not stopping instruction. Classes and exams are continuing. We are uh, finishing out the quarter and fall and winter and summer will be, again, um, primarily virtual, fall and winter, you saw the email that came out a few weeks ago that talked about the different ways that classes will be formatted for fall. Um, winter uh, is a little far out right now. We are trying to figure out, we want to make sure what fall is going to look like. Um, and I think every college across the country is trying to see, trying to shape what that fall is going to be. And we, we are no different. Um, but we are, as soon as we make decisions, like we've made a decision for summer and fall, we let our students know as soon as possible. Um, and that information came out a few weeks ago. So I'd encourage you to review um, that email that described the different, um, different formats for classes. How will colleges react to requests for deferrals gap year? Um, I mean, I think in terms of our institution, if, you know, students um, request for deferrals for a year um, or decide to come back in, at Highline for that year, we're going to take you. We're going to take students. So we welcome all students who uh, want to continue their educational uh, journey, be it at Highline, um, coming in as a, as a first time student coming in as running start, coming in um, as a student who maybe decided to, uh, you know, get admitted to University of Washington, but decided for the first or two quarters to take classes at Highline, we welcome everybody. Um, you know, and that's really our response to um, our students, the, the student challenges. We know that students are having to make tough decisions um, in terms of where they're going to be in the fall. We also know that the uh, four years are easing their, their deadlines um, and extending their deadlines um, to be able to capture what their incoming class is going to be. So there's a lot of decisions as you, you students have to make. And there was an article last week, um, I believe it was last week in the Seattle Times that really spoke to the challenging decisions that students have to make. It's a little different more than where you're gonna to go to school, um, that usually May 1st decision. It's a lot different now. Um, and there was uh, some examples of students and some of their decision-making, some of them deciding to go to that quote unquote four-year college. Um, some students decided to take what they call, you know, I guess some would, some would call it a gap year and go to the community college and then, um, decide to go to four year. Um, I'm not a big fan of the title gap year. I think that um, the community colleges provide an exceptional amount of educational opportunity uh, for our students um, at a fraction of the cost. Uh, so you're still getting quality education, but you're not paying that full, that full, full price, but you're not stopping your journey in education by being part of the community college, community technical college system. Um, if anything, um, right now, um, having an open access policy with our community technical college system welcomes anybody, regardless if you want to transfer in a year or two years or you want to start here. So I encourage um, all of you students, if you are in that situation, to try to figure out what next year is going to look like, to really think about the different options. And at the end of the day, if it's Highland College, wonderful. But the most important thing to me is that you go to a place um, and you enroll at a place that supports you and is directing you and aiming for your success. Um, that's all that matters at the end of the day. And if that's Wazoo, if that's Stanford, if that is 
uh, Long Beach State in LA, if that is Highline College or if that's UCLA, it does not matter. As long as that institution is there to support you in achieving your educational goals and they have a clear path for that to happen for you. Any other questions uh, from, our, from our participants? Uh, I would encourage you to, to check the, the, the chat. There's a lot of information that um, our wonderful uh, participants today, um, speakers uh, provide information regarding uh, contact information, Zoom information, um, again, this uh, will be taped. This is taped and it will be available soon for um, you to all to refer to. I think Nicole's um, PowerPoint um, is a great one. I encourage everyone, uh, regardless if you're a student, staff, or faculty, uh, to review that information. As always, ask at highline.edu is available for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and uh, our response time. It's pretty fast um, and we encourage you that if you have any questions that come up um, at any time to be able to uh, contact or utilize that function. Uh, CARES Act again, um, if you haven't applied and need assistance, I would encourage you to submit that information. Um, and if you have submitted already uh, to hold tight and to know that those, um, the time you know, our staff does need time to process. I know they indicated the number of days on there, um, but I would encourage you to just adhere to that. Try to wait. I would not try to make calls over and over again. Um, they will be contacting you as soon as possible with information. Um, additional information is needed, um, but they are responding as fast as they can. And another question that came through um, at the very end and uh, Nicole will answer it. And um, the student who has provided this one particular student is the winner today because the, stu uh, the student has asked some exceptional questions. And uh, again, really appreciate all the questions being asked. But for this particular individual, these are just wonderful, wonderful questions. And with that, the question is, what are what are mental health resource what mental health resources exist for students during this period of online instruction? And I will turn that over to Nicole Wilson to answer. Thanks. It's exciting to get a mental health question. Thanks for asking. Um, I mentioned a bit earlier, but our counseling services are up and running. So we have um, sessions available for students. They're free, um, typically one hour sessions. Um, and there, you can get us by Zoom, call us, email us. Everything's on our website, counseling.highline.edu. But then there's also on that website is a full list of all the mental health agencies, as well as all the crisis lines um, that are in our community. And you can also work with any of us to, to refer to those. But we are up and running and excited to work with our students. I do wanna mention, and I forgot to mention this earlier, the crisis line is 24 seven. And you can call the crisis line, you can also text the crisis line. And it's 1-866-427-4747. Say that again, it's 1-866-427-4747. And then you can also text the word SHARE to 741741. Again, this is all on our website, um, but we have 24 hour services in the community, then also counseling sessions with us. Thank you, Nicole. And we have uh, a couple more questions that came through. This is great. Um, and I don't know if it's Vice President Reader on the call. Maybe he's not, that's fine, no problem. Um, so I will uh, ask Fuzi to, Vice President Bilal, to, uh, <laughs> to be able to uh, talk and respond. How is the graduation application process? What is the graduation application process, excuse me? Do we mail it out? Do we email it out? If so, to who? 
Uh, great question. I will look into that. I'll take the, the name of the student and get back to you. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and then uh, one came if another one came, if you don't qualify for care assistance and you need assistance, where do you go? And that's an excellent, excellent question. What I would encourage every student to do is to utilize that application and apply. Because what happens is when you when people we receive those applications and the team will determine if one's eligible following the guidelines we will look at um, you know all different areas of el eligibility and either will be able to provide you know utilizing the care resources or if uh, one is not eligible through that they will then be able to identify other uh, sources of aid um, utilizing some other areas on campus um, and then be able to um, recommend and also communicate and provide um, that link to those resources. We want every person um, that if you need assistance to apply um, and then it'll be up to the campus to determine how assistance can be provided regardless if you fall into um, a category that the CARES Act um, has allowed to provide funding, but we, we do know that the CARES Act has some limitations. Um, not all communities are eligible under that, and we recognize that, but we still wanna know who you are. Let us determine based on that information from CARES and let us be able to provide guidance in terms of um, identifying other types of aid that can assist you. Aaron, did I do okay? He said yes, so I'm gonna take that as a yes. <laughs> okay. I wanna make sure all the questions have been answered. Perfect. Okay, it is perfect timing. It's 1.59. I want to uh, thank everybody for participating. Fuzi, Nicole, uh, Emily, um, others um, on the call, on the Zoom call. I really appreciate always providing that information. Um, to our captioners, thank you so much. Um, to our students, um, really, really thanking you uh, for providing uh, excellent questions and for being here. I know that you have a lot of places you can be, um, like doing homework, like taking care of family, uh, taking care of friends. There's a lot of other places you can be, but you choose to be here and this shows your commitment. And we really appreciate it. And we hope you got some Inform great information today, and we are always here. So please, again, from ask, ask at highline.edu to contacting my office directly to um, responding, uh, communicating to the information provided in the chat, the college is really here to help. Um, so, really thanking you for being here. We'll see you at the next um, town hall, and we'll try to probably have one before the end of the academic year. But again, thank you all very much. Thank you all for the participants and we'll talk to you soon.